The first is lean in on service. I'm here to serve, I'm here to help, I'm trying to do something of good. What's the intention behind this thing you're about to do? If you're gonna go on stage, what's the intention? Is the intention to, to hurt somebody, to screw somebody over, to lie to them, to cheat? No, hopefully not. The intention is good, the intention is positive. You wanna, you wanna serve, you wanna help, you want your message to hopefully impact somebody's life. If you're selling a product or service, yes, you're, you wanna make money and you're trying to solve a problem, you're trying to help people. So anytime I make it about you, you know, the people watching it, I make it personal, I focus on service instead of focusing on me. How am I received? How are, how are you liking me? How is that guy who passed by? What is he thinking about me? Anytime I can focus on other people and the value that they're hopefully going to get, at least with the intention, I wouldn't be maybe so bold or, or brave to say, no, this is going to be my best video ever. But it's my intention always. It's my intention to try to make the best video I've ever done and give as much value as I can and to serve. And hopefully one person is touched by this video and it means something to them, right? So when you're afraid to do something, focus in on service. Need motivation? Watch a top 10 with Believe Nation. Hey, it's Nina Carmichael, and we made these videos because we know you're the most ambitious person in your circle, but you know you're capable of more. And you get that push by surrounding yourself with the best. So today, let's learn from one of the best, my husband Evan Carmichael, and our take on his top 10 rules for success. Enjoy! Rule number two, step in your confidence. Reminding yourself every day of how amazing you are, I think it's one of the greatest gifts you can give yourself, and it's not about ego, it's about confidence. Confidence comes from a place of strength. Ego comes from a place of weakness and insecurity. So it's time to step into your confidence and remind yourself of how amazing you really are. This video is gonna help. So I used to have a lot of problems with, with ego versus confidence. I used to feel like, who am I? Why do people need to hear my story? Uh, I was profiling all these different successful entrepreneurs and people kept asking, well, where are you? Well, uh, how come we can't see what you're about? Where did you come from? And I always felt like my story doesn't matter. I'm, I'm profiling David Goggins and Steve Jobs and, and all these people. Why do you care about, I mean, sure, I sold my first business, had, a, had an exit, but it's nothing compared to what all these other people have done. And I always shrouded it, covered it, under ego like well that's such an egotistical thing to do but really i was just playing small i was cheating people the opportunity to learn to get better to grow from my story that my story has value it's the belief that my story had value that took some time to really work up even making videos on my channel the number one most requested person for top 10 was me and i resisted for maybe two years of even making an evan carmichael top 10 because i just felt not good enough. I felt like that's such an ego play and not coming from a place of confidence. And yes, my message has impact, has meaning, can help the world. And the first Evan Carmichael top 10 came out from my team. So my birthday, birthday, I think it was my birthday, birthday or Christmas, my team put together with the, with the support of my hardcore fans, my first top 10. No, top not yet, Evan. Videos? You gonna watch it? I'm a little scared. And that's the one that, that went live on a channel. And ever since then, we've done a regular series of me being on the channel. But it's, it's been a real progress for me. It's been a, a real evolution. It's taken me a long time and hopefully you can get there faster. This has been almost 20 years of me sharing ideas and content and, and slowly stepping into the light and slowly building more confidence and more belief. And I hope that with the content I'm making and the experiences I'm sharing, you can get there a lot faster. Rule number three, take the next step. The world's biggest problem is a lack of belief. The, the biggest problem for me, for you, for Brendan Burchard, for everybody is a lack of belief. You believe in yourself to the extent of what you've done, that you can do it again, but you don't believe in the next step. You don't believe that you can go from here to here. This is why I think everybody has what I call Michael Jordan level talent at something. Like you, you're a genius. You are the best in the world at something. And it's not what you, what you went to school for. It's not what your parents taught you. It's not what the people around you are doing. It's probably something very, very, very different. And unlike your parents or grandparents, it's actually possible now. Because of technology, because of the internet, it's actually possible for you to go off and be this Michael Jordan level genius at something. You don't need to have the resources. You don't need to have the education. You don't need to have the connection because it's all of the walls have been broken down and it's only getting easier. But it's still the lack of belief in the ability to do the thing. 
People say, well, I, I think cancer is the world's biggest problem. Great, I think cancer should have been solved by now. The woman who would have solved cancer is a manager at an accounting firm doing work that she hates. Because one, she never believed in herself enough to uh, go down the route to become a doctor or researcher. Uh, and two, even if she started, she didn't believe in herself enough that she could be the genius at it, the, the, the Michael Jordan level genius, best in the world or something. And this is this is what happens. We settle, we get stuck, we get complacent. We, we find all these reasons and excuses why we can't do it, but really it's just fear and lack of belief. And every time you break through, every, every major breakthrough that I've had in my life has come on the other side of me believing in myself more that I could go off and do that thing. Rule number four, use nose as fuel. Use the nose as fuel. And I add this in not because I use it, but because I know it works for a lot of other people. And, and I'm channeling Tom Bill you right now. This is one of the things that Tom does That's he credits to having his success. If you know Tom, Impact Theory, built a billion dollar business with, with Quest and now has his awesome YouTube channel. He has a list. He has a list of all the people who doubted him, who didn't believe in him. And whenever he feels like he really needs that extra motivation, he goes to that dark place and looks at that list and say, all these people did not believe in me. I'm going to show them wrong. I don't do that. I don't get a lot of power and strength for myself of being in the dark side of proving somebody wrong. But I think it can be very beneficial for people and a lot of people do talk about it. So I wanted to at least give that to you as an option. Use those no's as fuel. Use that, your mom telling you that you suck and you can't make it. Maybe she doesn't say that you suck, but that you can't make it. Using your friends or haters online saying that you're never gonna do it. Using that as fuel to say, I'm gonna show you and prove you wrong. I just think the danger is if you live in there for too long, if you're only fueled for the dark side, it consumes you. If you're only doing something to prove somebody wrong, you're never gonna stay consistent, persistent enough because it's not a good enough reason. At the core of doing the thing has to be you love doing the thing, you wanna serve, right? You're built to serve, you wanna serve, you wanna help, you want to help, right? Um, but if you have to channel the dark side every now and then, use those noses fuel to help you get forward, then go for it and give it a shot. Also, to make sure you're actually taking action after watching this video, I've designed a special free worksheet just for this video. The worksheet will highlight all of the lessons learned in this video, as well as pull out our three favorite learnings and quotes that will inspire you to actually do something. The worksheet will also give you space to write down what your key takeaways are and your specific plan of action to make sure you're getting results. If you want the worksheet designed specifically for this video, absolutely for free, there's a link in the description below. Go click on it and start building the momentum in your life and your business. I'll see you there. Rule number five, defend your time. Your actions have to map to your ambitions. One of the biggest challenges people have is figuring out what does balance look like for you. You don't want to have Jeff Bezos' calendar. You don't want to have Evan Carmichael's calendar either. Balance looks like something different to us. Finding your version of balance, mapping your actions to your ambitions, and then having the courage and the confidence to chase that down and apply it to your life when the people around you are saying, you're nuts, you're crazy, that's the juice of life. That is where you'll find peace as well as your success. So as an example, let me walk you through a typical week in the life of Evan Carmichael. I like having my morning routine that I do pretty much every day of the week. I have my evening routine that I'll do pretty much every day of the week. And then I have different days for different things. I find that if I have one full day to focus on just one main task, I'm much more productive. So on Mondays is my mentoring day and I'm spending the whole day mentoring the people on my team. We're growing. We've got over 25 people on the team and some people I talk to every week, some people every month, some people every quarter, but I spend the whole day just figuring out how can I make the people on my team better, listen to, heard, improve training, skills, all of it. That's my whole day on Monday. And all I'm doing is being in the mentoring zone. Tuesday is my YouTube day. I'm making videos, I'm strategizing, I'm planning, I'm creating. I'm all in, I'm just making YouTube videos. My team doesn't bother me on Tuesday. Unless it's an urgent emergency, they're not connecting with me on Tuesday because I'm in YouTube mode. Wednesday is my project day. I work on the things that I wanna do to grow my business. Whatever project is on my mind right now. So 
right now, build to serve, right? Getting the book out, promoting it, uh, working on my email campaigns and sequences and finals and all of that is most of Wednesdays. Thursdays is my public facing day. That's when I'm doing interviews and hangouts and podcasts and being on people's Instagram shows and YouTube shows and radio shows. It's all day, it's, it's 25 minutes on, five minute break. 25 minutes on, five minute break, my entire Thursday. Fridays uh, is my CEO day, and so I'm doing bigger picture projects to help build my business and grow it forward. Saturday becomes fun day. Saturday is when I'm spending the day with my wife. Normally, I'm planning a new food place for us to go eat. I'm looking at festivals for us to go to and enjoy. Uh, we're in coronavirus time right now, so we're in lockdown. But it's basically non-work day, and I'm in charge of planning a day for myself and my wife to have a fun day that I know she's going to enjoy. Sunday's family admin day and that's when we're doing Costco and dishes and laundry and we'll do the dishes more than just Sunday <laughs> but laundry and cleaning up the condo and going to Home Depot or whatever has to get done that's more kind of on the admin side and when you have clearly defined days for for your life at least for my life it prevents bleed so for example if you know we really have to go to Costco to get something not on a Saturday nope you have to defend your time you gotta defend your time because other things will constantly attack in your time. If you're ever at the point where you feel like everybody has something for you to do and you have no time for yourself, it's, it's your fault. You haven't put the boundaries up. You haven't put the gates up. You haven't protected your time enough with the shield that you have. That's what you need to do on a consistent basis and say, I love you. I respect you. I wanna help you. I wanna work with you. This is my time. I can help you over here. And, and the caveat is when you show up for them, you're with them. Rule number six, follow through. Act on your uncomfortable ideas. We get great ideas as entrepreneurs. We get great ideas, and especially in moments of boldness and confidence and courage, you get great ideas. It could be when you're in a shower on an airplane or traveling, you get great ideas for what you wanna do. And then you, tomorrow you tell yourself, oh, I can't, I can't do that, that's crazy. That, that's too hard, that's, that's scary, that's uncomfortable. Teach yourself to act on your crazy ideas is how you start to build confidence. Because if you come up against a crazy idea and then you allow yourself to say, well, that's too scary, that's too hard, that's too difficult, I can't do that. What you've taught yourself is you don't have courage. You've taught yourself to come up with ideas but then not trust in yourself. And so when you come up with the next idea, you're telling yourself, I don't trust myself. When you set a goal for yourself to hit, hit some big goal, you don't believe yourself anymore because all you've done is taught yourself that you set goals, you have ideas, and you never follow through. You've built this identity of I'm somebody who doesn't follow through. That's what you need to start to destroy. That's what you need to destroy and squash out of your life, that identity of I don't follow through. Your ideas are genius. Your ideas are amazing. This is why Play Bigger Trees doesn't help. You get an idea in your, in your awesome environment, act on it, do something, lean into the uncomfortable, lean into the things that cause a little bit of your heart to, to beat and cause some anxiety. That's how you start to make the shift. Rule number seven, get specific. Decide on your top three goals right now. What are your top three goals, most important things to you right now? What are your priorities? The three big things that have to happen for you, what are they? Get clear, get specific. If you don't know what they are, that's why you're not chasing anything big down. If you haven't thought about it, then, then that's the problem. You're, you're stuck in these small projects for life. What are your three big goals for your business and your life right now? Rule number eight, be around ambitious people. Staying in your cocoon and only hanging around the same five to 10 people, if those people are not more ambitious than you, then you're gonna stay stuck. You're gonna feel good about yourself because you're pushing everybody and you're optimistic and, and you feel good relative to where they're at, but you won't be growing. You, you are probably the most ambitious person that you know. You're the, you're the most positive, most uplifting, most energetic, most ambitious person of any of the people that you hang out with. And that's great and fulfilling and, and uh, you can serve them and help them, but it limits your own growth. You stay stuck or you stay super slow growing. And so you need to inject people who have a greater belief system than you into your life to make you feel like you can grow and continue to get better. And that could be somebody who's actually in your life. Quick like side note, if there's anybody in your life at all who you've met once, twice, four times, right? It doesn't have to be your family. Somebody that you've hung out with and met that made you feel better about yourself when you left them. Holy cow, hang on to that person. I love the, what I say, collect good people. Hang on to those people. Find a way to, to do a business with them. Find a way to spend time with them. Find a way to, to hang out with them. But Brendan and Burchard reaching out to me to do this business together, right? Like he's finding ways to hang out with 
what he thinks is good people. So, you know, that's that's a tremendous honor on my part. So if you have anybody like that, and again, it's probably not the closest people to you. You have to go on the fringe of people you have spent some time with. Try to spend more time with them. Find the reason to do it. Whether it's starting the business together or whether it's just having a monthly coffee together just to connect again, do it. If you don't have anybody like that in your life, don't stress. That's why there's videos. That's why there's books. That's why there's podcasts. If you watched, if you actually started your day with an Espresso video every day, your life will start to shift. You won't notice it tomorrow or the next day or the next day, but a month later, three months later, six months later, you'll start to see, I'm, I'm thinking bigger now. I'm, I'm more bold, I'm more confident. I, ha I wanna do bigger things with my life. Well, why is that? It's because you're hanging around people who are doing bigger things with their life, even virtually. So I can learn a lot from Brendan, who, who I've met and now doing a, a partnership with, but also from Oprah Winfrey and Elon Musk and all these people. The more I'm around them, the more they pull me to want to think bigger. Rule number nine, focus on progress. Focus on progress. When you focus on progress instead of the end result, that's where I think you can keep your motivation, keep your belief. When I first started making my videos, I wasn't getting any results, right? Nobody was watching, nobody was commenting. I felt like a loser, right? Like, nobody cares, it's not happening, I'm not getting the results. Understand that you very rarely ever get results at the beginning. If you focus on just getting the results at the beginning, you're likely gonna get too discouraged and quit. It's not that the results aren't important, it's just people have a too short an attention span and when you focus on the results at the beginning, it is too discouraging and you do give up. Instead, you focus on the progress. Are you getting better? Are you learning? Was your video better than last time? Did you show up with more energy than last time? Did you have better points than you did last time? Was that sales call you did better than the, the one last time? Was your next test better than it was yesterday, right? Are you getting better? Because if you can say, I'm getting better. If, you, if you're making videos and you look back a week later, a month later and say, man, I'm, I still suck, but I'm better than I was a week ago, a month ago, and you can focus on the progress, at least for me, it really helps fuel my motivation, my belief in myself that, hey, if I made that growth from here to here, then I can make more growth from here to here. And at the beginning, here's the thing, at the beginning, the growth is pretty fast. When you're learning something from, from scratch at the beginning, you actually learn very quickly. It's at the end that it gets harder. For me right now to keep getting better, is harder. I don't see as big a return on my on my progress as Evan Carmichael growth from last week to this week, from last month to this month. How much better am I on camera from last month to this month? Not that much. It, it requires even more effort and even more mentorship and even more practice and training to get better as when you're close to the top. At the beginning, you can learn really quickly and there's a lot of progress. The flip side for me now is there's lots of results. Right? When you start actually getting good, that's when the results kick in. So then you can start focusing on the results. Say, hey, is this working or not? Is this video doing better than the last one or not? Because you start getting some data and results to work with. So at the beginning, you're focusing on the progress. Am I getting better? Am I improving? And am I learning? Is it better than I, than I was last week? And then as that starts to taper off, you might get frustrated with your progress. But good news, you're going to start seeing results come in. And that'll keep you motivated to keep going as well. Rule number 10, the last one before our very special bonus clip, be a doer. Don't compromise is an amazing message, but too many of you who are perfectionists will hear that message and use it as an excuse for not taking action. I'm a firm believer that planners need to do more and doers need to plan more. And here's the problem. Planners do not need to plan more. You're already great at planning. You will plan, 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 plan your life away and never actually take any kind of action. And so for the perfectionists out there, for the planners who want to have the perfect plan before you do anything, this is an amazing message, but you're not hearing it correctly. It's not don't compromise on having the perfect plan and just sit in your room all day and don't take any action because Steve Jobs was a doer. This is a hard lesson that I had to learn myself because I lost a $40 million deal in my first business when I was 21, 22 because I was a perfectionist, because everything had to be perfect, because I didn't want to compromise. That's how I interpreted the message, but as a result, I didn't do anything and just kept planning. And I lost the deal, it became between us and our biggest competitor. And we were really late to the party because we didn't do the, the right thing and we ended up losing the deal. Now, would we have won it if I had done more? Maybe not 100%, but I would have had a better shot at it. And so ever since then, I've been trying to release that perfectionist habit. It's still in there, I still love the plane, but the people who have the most success have that combination of planning, but then actually doing. 
Hard work is your ticket in. Hard work doesn't guarantee your success, but it's your ticket in. There's nobody who you look up to, who you respect, who you wanna be like, who did not work incredibly hard to get to where they're at. Now, people say, work smart, work smart, work. Yes, there's lots of people who work hard and never get anywhere close to their goals. There's lots of people who work incredibly hard who, who stay earning minimum wage their entire life because they didn't work smart, they were only working hard. But there's nobody who just works smart and doesn't work hard. <laughs> Even if they're fooling you with their pictures on Instagram, it's that combination of working hard plus working smart. I've covered most of these people, I've hung out with a lot of these people, I see the incredible smarts that they have in the activities that they choose, but also just the work ethic they have to show up every day and stay consistent on their goals. So in this video, I'm gonna try to give you some tips and, and steps on how to actually do it. Like how do you stay consistent? How do you figure out how to work hard, but also work smart on accomplishing your mission? So let's get it started. First off, you have to actually love the thing, right? I mean, how many times have you started a business because you thought it was gonna make you a lot of money? Be honest, I've done it too. You start a business because you think it's gonna make you money and then you quickly get bored of it. <laughs> you quickly realize it's not making you money and you don't wanna do it anymore. And you close it down and move on to the next thing. And so many people are just opportunity hopping, jump to the next thing and the next thing and the next thing and the next thing and the next thing without ever actually loving any of the things. And so you never, you never actually win. You might make a little bit of money here and there. You know, you might be able to pay some of your bills off. It's great, but you're not living the life that you want because you're just opportunity hopping instead of actually finding the thing that you love doing. Where the number one rule for success, if you watch any of my videos, we've covered so many people, take my word for it or go do your own research. The number one, number one, guys, number one rule for success is that you have to love what you're doing. You have to love the process, the actual work that you're doing. It doesn't feel like work because you like it so much. Making videos doesn't feel like work because I like it, because I like the process. I like making it. I, I like making this video more than getting something like this, right? It's great. Hey, a million subscribers, awesome. Or the other channel's great. But I like, I like the feeling of making this video knowing that you right now are watching it. That means something to me. I like it. That's why I keep going. Otherwise it's crazy, you know? 10,000 videos plus later, why? Like, how do you keep going? Because I like it. It doesn't feel like work to me. I talk about it when I do interviews. You know, how, people ask me, how have you not burnt out already? Like so many people are burning out on YouTube. But, well, it's not just YouTube, it's entrepreneurship. People burn out of entrepreneurship, not just having a YouTube channel. Why do you burn out of entrepreneurship? Well, because you stop actually liking, there's too much of the work that you're doing that you don't like anymore, right? There's too much of the work that you're doing. You might still love the vision for where you're going. If you don't love the vision, you gotta get out ASAP. But you might still love the vision, but you're just taking on too much activity that you don't like doing anymore. So when I'm talking to somebody on their podcast, I like, I like doing interviews. It, it makes me happy. It brings me joy to try to hit somebody else's audience, right? To try to spread believe to an even wider net. And so if I'm talking to somebody, I say, well, what, is this work for you? Because in talking to you, this doesn't work for me. This is fun. I'm going to leave this interview with more energy than, than I came in that's a sign that you're doing the right thing. So I, I like this, thank you. You're, you're giving me, you know, I'm, I'm giving you content and, and exposure for your channel, but you're giving me a gift because this is fun. You're giving me more energy. It doesn't feel like work. The second it starts to feel like work, you have to adjust and it might be, it might be a big adjustment. Maybe you shouldn't be doing your business anymore, period, because you were just opportunity hopping. You don't actually love the thing. Or maybe you just need to make a minor adjustment and realize, okay, this makes sense as a strategy, but it's just not the right strategy for me. I need to move on and do something else. Even though it works for some other people, it's not me. I don't wanna do it. So that's where we start transitioning to working smart, right? So working hard is you showing up every day, working towards your goals, that, that your purpose means something to you, and that the work you do, you actually enjoy and having fun in. The working smart is then figuring out there's so many different ways to win inside your industry. There's so many different ways to win. There's so many people who have won and there's not just one path. This is where we get locked up is feeling like I have to do it this way, but you don't actually love doing it that way. And the second you start taking things on because you think it's the smart thing to do, but you have no interest in doing it, you will never win. You will never win doing work that you hate. It's not gonna happen. 
You will never win doing work that you hate. You'll say that you'll do whatever it takes. You won't. You'll quit. You'll give up on it because you don't like it. Chasing the goal alone is not enough. You have to actually enjoy the process of getting to the goal, that the process becomes more important than the goal, gives you more satisfaction and happiness and pleasure than hitting the goal. How many times have you hit a goal and then been disappointed after, right? You're like, oh, what's next? <laughs> Sometimes borderline depression, right? Ted Turner's dad had a goal to hit a million dollars. He did it and then he killed himself because he thought things were gonna change, but he realized his life was still the same. So having goals are really good and important, but more important than the goal is the process of accomplishing the goal. You have to actually like the work. So how do you be smart? Well, you have to, you have to do things that bring value to people that you also enjoy. So in the course of my career on YouTube, at least I've got a bunch of great compliments. Um, the two that stand out in this context are, are Gary Vee and Ed Milet, where Gary Vee said, I'm the content DJ that inspires people. He said, hey, you watch so many videos and then DJ it to inspire people. And Ed Milet said that I'm the modern day Napoleon Hill, that Napoleon Hill is the, the greatest person in person development history and that I'm the modern day Napoleon Hill. Now, when they both said that, like, I, I don't know, I'm still working on receiving compliments. So I was kind of blown away by both of them. And then I asked, hey, well, can I use that in my, <laughs> in my bio or my profiles? But what, what I do is I love, I love modeling success. You know, it's why I make all this content. It's why, it's why I have all these people, you know, behind me on the wall. You know, we got, we got Steve Jobs and E.P. Janini and my parents and Howard Schultz and Kanye West. Like, I love modeling success. And I, and I want to share my own voice, my own thoughts, my own opinions, my own learnings, my own stories, my own lessons. And somewhere in that mix is now Evan Carmichael. Where some people are, if you look at Gary or Ed or whoever else, they're, they're just sharing their own thoughts for the most part. They might have guests on at interviews. Uh, they might occasionally have a quote from somebody else, but it's, it's their own views and opinions. I never needed to be the guy. You know, I like sharing other people's stuff. I like sharing what I learned from their story. And, and I've reluctantly kind of stepped forward to share my own. I used to think nobody would care about my story or what I had to say, or why would you care about me when I'm showcasing Elon Musk? Like, who am I? But people kept asking for my story, where I came from. So I started sharing it more. And so in that mix became Evan Carmichael. That's how I'm different than everybody else. Same thing for you. You know, what do you love doing that then can also bring value to other people? And what combinations of things can you bring together instead of thinking I can do this or I can do this? In the mix is your next great opportunity. When you can take two or three of your interests and not do them as the or, right? Instead of thinking or, you think and. Instead of or, 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 you think and, and, and. But not three different businesses. This is where people get tripped up. It's not three different businesses. It's one business that does all three of those things combined in a way that nobody else has done it before. Because nobody can replicate that. The thing that you love doing, or the things that you love doing, smushed together that don't make sense for anybody else, is, end up, is how you're going to end up winning. That's how you're going to win. James Altucher calls it idea sex. So you have one idea and another idea and they have sex and then out comes your, your great idea. <laughs> I like it. That's how you start working smart. So working hard is your ticket in. Working hard, if you're not willing to work hard, you're just not ever gonna win, period. How do you work hard? Well, you actually have to like the work so it doesn't feel like work that Jerry Seinfeld calls it the torture you can endure, that it's torture for other people, but for you, he's like, this is, I like this, this is fun, this doesn't feel like torture, you know? If making, the idea of making 10,000 videos, 12,000 videos, whatever, that would be torture for a lot of people. It's like, okay, that's cool, I like it. Let's go, let's make another 10,000. <laughs> let's keep going. And then inside of that is, what do you love doing that can bring value to other people in a way that only you can do it? By mixing some of the things, your passions, your interests together that have never been mixed before, together in that unique way, that's how you're gonna win. Instead of saying that that's not practical, instead of saying that um, they're two different businesses, instead of saying nobody's gonna care, no, 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 that's how you're gonna win. You mix those things together, focus on then how you can use that mix to bring value to your customers, and now nobody can touch you. 
for people who say, people message me and say, hey Evan, this person is copying you. This person is also doing top 10 rules of success. This person is like, I don't care. Like I spend zero time thinking about that because if you are just trying to be Evan Carmichael, you're never gonna be Evan Carmichael, right? The most you're gonna be is an Evan Carmichael Jr. Instead of trying to be an Elvis impersonator, go make your own music, right? So anybody who's just trying to copy me, I don't, I don't care about it. It's the people who are creating new innovative things that I consider to be the real competition. Hard work is your ticket in. You have to love what you're doing. That allows you to keep going. Then you have to figure out inside of what you love, how can you combine your interests, your passions, your special things that make you a special unique snowflake <laughs> to bring value to people. And when you figure that out, that's the unique angle of working hard plus working smart that won't even feel like you're working hard or even working that smart. You're just doing you and helping people. And that's how you win. Figuring out your core values, I think, is one of the most important exercises that you can do as a human being. Like, how do you know how to live your life? How do you wake up every day and do what you want to do? How do you have any clarity on what to do next when you don't know what you stand for? When you don't know your most important core value? It's the reason why I wrote your one word, I don't know how many years ago. The concept is you have one most important core value. What is it? Figure it out. When you understand what it is, it'll shine a giant spotlight on your life to realize, oh, this is why I'm not happy. Like if you are ever not happy, frustrated, stressed out, it's because there's too many things that are going on in your life that are out of congruence with your single most important core value. So if you look at mine, it's belief. Right? Believe is my single most important core value. Okay, cool. So I'm happy when I'm doing things that make me feel believe. And it's something that you, you have for yourself, but it's also something that then you give to other people. So you're on a mission. The idea becomes, I want to spread belief for myself. And I also want to help other people believe in themselves more. Whatever you come up with as a core value is for you, is what you still need the most right now. I still need belief right now but it's also something that we want to give to other people. Whether it's the world, if you're watching this video, it's probably world, big mission, but uh, it could just be the closest people to you. You know, if you're saying the most important core value is family, then you want to bring more family to your family. If you're saying the most important core value is belonging, then you want to give belonging to everybody, to yourself. You still need to feel more belonging yourself, and you want to give that to the world or your closest friends and family. But that's, that's the game. You have to figure out your single most important core value. If you feel like you're being pulled in a thousand directions, that's why you don't know what you stand for. If you feel uneasy about something or unsure about the decision, that's also why you don't know what you stand for. And when you figure that out, it gives you the courage to take the action required. When you understand what your single most important core value is, it allows you to step into your courageous self, to step into your bold self. It gives you the permission to move forward where old you wouldn't have done it. You know, have you had those moments where you really want to do something? You're inspired, you got a great idea, it's like you want to serve, you want to help, you think this could be amazing, and then you stop yourself, you know? You stop yourself, oh, I, I, who am I? I can't do that, I'm not, I'm not well known enough, I don't have the money, I didn't go to school for this, I don't have the connections with the parents, right? We stop ourselves. We, we, we're planning to plan and getting ready to get ready, but we never actually do the thing. Well, figuring out your core value allows you to have the courage and strength to step into who you want to be. How can my one word be believe if I'm not willing to do the things to believe in myself? Even something like this, filming on the street, this used to terrify me. I remember the first video that I made when I was walking down the street, uh, it's probably about a decade ago, my agent challenged me to do it and I was terrified. I was terrified that people might judge me, I was terrified that... Uh, just looking foolish and looking bad. I don't know, I was just terrified, filming in public. And I remember I was filming and I made sure that I walked down just this really quiet street where nobody would see me and made sure I looked around and nobody was there and I started filming. And then there was a male woman who came by. She was delivering the mail. I didn't see her before I started filming. And so as she walked by, I, I, brought the, I was like this. Do, 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 put the camera down, you know? It's like, I'm not doing anything. Nope, do, 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 do. And then when she left, you're like, okay, back to filming. And uh, 
you know, now, now, I mean, how many thousands of videos later, I'm much more able to get out in front of a camera and, and create. But what's the thing that helps me push? What's the help? What's the thing that gives me the confidence and courage to do that thing that was incredibly scary at the time? Well, belief. Hey, my one word is belief. My most important core value is belief. So I need to, I need to step into it. It's a, it's a constant reminder. It always forces you to be not the version that somebody else wants for you, but the version that you want for you. Believe was, was, is inside me. It's not that it was just given to me by somebody. You don't have to have believe as your core value either. You can figure out what yours is. But if ever you're stuck with a big decision and you're not sure what to do, and you actually know what your most important core value is, then guess what happens? It forces you to go and take some action because otherwise you're operating against yourself and you don't need somebody yelling at you or telling you what you should do, you know what you should do because you have the awareness around your core value. When I wrote your one word, it was, it was designed for entrepreneurs because it's about how to find your core value but then how to build into a business. And uh, I was surprised that a lot of the people who liked the book were not just the entrepreneurs but the, the spouses and the family members of the entrepreneurs who read the book to say, okay, they don't want to start a business, but they need this first part. Kids in school are reading the book and send me pictures and tweets uh, as they go through the curriculum to figure out what their most important core value is. Like, can you imagine being in grade six, seven, eight, ten, and knowing what your most important core value is and using that as a lens through, through which you can make decisions for the rest of your life? Man, how beautiful is that? I wish I had that. I mean, that's why that's why we do what we do, right? That's why that's why authors write books. That's why entrepreneurs start businesses. Is we want to solve the problems that we had for ourselves, and we want to make the path a little bit easier for other people, right? That's why we do what we do. So, how do you find your core value? Well, you can you can pick up your one word. You can pick up built to serve, but the, as a starting point, think about who your favorite teacher was growing up and why. Think about your favorite teacher of all time. Mine was mine was Madame Farr, who. Um, was my teacher mentor in my last year of high school. But who was yours? Who was your favorite teacher growing up and why? And specifically on the why, it wasn't because they taught you a certain subject. I didn't like Madame Farr because she taught me French, right? I don't even use French day to day at all. Even living in Canada, we don't use French. But, uh, but she taught me to believe in myself. So there's one. What's your favorite movie of all time and why? Mine is Seabiscuit. I love Seabiscuit. It's about this horse that's way too small to win, not supposed to win, a jockey that's way too big to win and not supposed to win, an owner that has no money and is not supposed to win. It's like all this stuff that's not supposed to happen and yet they all find each other and somehow, miracle of miracles, they figure it out and they win a whole bunch of races. It's based off a true story. It's, it's a belief story, at least for me. When I think about that movie, why do I love it? Well, it's about belief. Think about your parents. You know, maybe you loved your parents, maybe you hate your parents. Uh, what do you... What was the biggest lesson that you learned from them? Like, what did you love the most? Even if you didn't like your parents or didn't think they were there for you or, you know, whatever, what, what did you love about them? Or if there's nothing redeemable that you can find, then what did you wish that they gave you? What do you want to give to your kids, right? Current kids or future kids? If you had to give them one lesson, what would that be? Again, mine is belief. My parents always taught me, hey, you're Evan Castrilli Carmichael, you can do anything you believe that you can. So. Believe is a common thread through all these things. If you think about well, this, why is this, why does this matter? If you think about all the things that made you come alive, all the thing, all the best moments in your life, all the positivity, all the happiness, all the, the the best moments in your life. There's a common thread between them, you know. So for me, is believe. Madame Farr, Seabiscuit, my parents. The common thread is believe. When you figure what that thread is for you, what it allows you to do is now design a life going forward with more intention. So now instead of it happening by accident you know I, I just happened to find Madame Far. I just happened to find Seabiscuit it wasn't intentional most of us are not doing that with any level of intentionality it's just that random things happen and every now and then one of those random things are good <laughs> right but now it allows you to design a life with more intentionality to say this is what I stand for this is who I am at the core these are the things that make me happy I want to chase down the feeling of X believe for me, right? I want to chase down that feeling of believe more. I want to be around the people who help make me believe. I want to create content and a business that inspires people to believe. I want to hire teammates, 
people on my in my business. We got 40 people now. I want to I want to bring on people who believe in the mission, believe in spreading belief, believe in each other, right? It's like it just gives so much more clarity and intentionality for the rest of your life. And so I think it's one of the most important exercises that you can ever do just as a human. I don't know why we don't teach this stuff in school. You should. Because how do you operate your life without knowing what you stand for? How do you operate without knowing who you are? It seems crazy. And it's not that difficult. And you don't have to go meditate on the mountain for five years to figure it out. You don't have to hire a $10,000 coach to figure it out. Just ask yourself those questions. Who was your favorite teacher growing up and why? What's your favorite movie of all time and why? What did you love about your parents? Or what's the gift that you want to give your kids? The most important core value coming through those things. That'll give you a much better path and direction and clarity and strength and courage for the rest of your life. Your environment creates your energy. When you are at home and you are down and you're out and you just stay home and you never get any fresh air and you never get people around you to push you and make you feel like things are possible, then you stay stuck. And when you get outside or when you go to an event and when you meet people, even if you're not there to learn, even if you haven't picked up anything at that event, just the fact that you got out and you met people and you changed your environment and you got some sunshine can make a world of difference. It is incredibly difficult to be an entrepreneur. It's hard. It's hard not just in that you're you know, not seeing results at the beginning and you're trying to figure out how to make money, but it's also hard that you're by yourself. You know, and you doubt yourself and you have insecurities and fears and you don't know if it's gonna work out or not. It's really hard. And so when you're stuck doing everything on your own and then the, the fears and the doubts and insecurities creep in when you're by yourself at home, that's the path down to the scary land. You know, that's the path down to anxiety and stress and depression and it's why, a big reason why we stay stuck and why we start and stop and start and stop and start and stop and, stop and, and can't stay consistent. Have you ever been on that entrepreneur roller coaster where you're motivated and excited and things are great one day and the next day you wake up and it's kind of not so great anymore? Has that happened to you? That happened to me a lot, that's for sure, in the early days. I mean, I quit on my business partner because I wasn't getting results and I just felt like a loser, I felt like a total idiot because nothing was working out. Um, it's the worst day of my life. It wasn't that I didn't have the heart or the ambition to do great things or didn't believe in the company. It's just, it wasn't working out. Nothing was working out. And, and I felt terrible about it. And a big reason why is because I was alone. I was by myself. I was alone. Uh, I didn't tell my friends. I mean, I guess I had a business partner, but I felt bad talking about it with, with him. And I stayed stuck. And so it took me a bunch of years to figure out these things that I'm about to share with you today about some hacks that I've used to help me maintain the momentum. So let's dive in. The first is every morning I go for a Believe Walk. And the Believe Walk is just me going outside. And sun or rain or snow here in Canada, I go for a Believe Walk. And on that walk, it's just a way to start my day. Because no matter how great a day I might have today, tomorrow I wake up and it's another day. Even today it was rough. I only slept two and a half hours or something last night. So it's a very uh, non-typical day. Energy not where it needs to be or usually is in the morning. And so first thing, let's get up and you know, give us our, a little bit of grace. It may not be as great a day as, as we usually do, but I'm gonna go for my Believe Walk. And just getting outside, just getting some fresh air on my face, just you know, having some sun with me, just not being in my, my home, already starts to lighten the mood, already starts to give me more energy. And so every day I go for a Believe Walk. You know, unless I am just completely incapacitated, I wake up, get some sun on my face, wherever I am, and get my Believe Walk and just think about what's the kind of day I wanna have. You know, what's my intention for the day? And try to set that up. Two, try to go to events and to the idea of, you know, buy tickets to things. It could be things that you don't care about, but it could also be things that you actually, you know, you're gonna be around some people. And every time I go away to an event, this is why, you know, the pandemic has been hard because he's just been sitting inside. But every time that I get to go away 
to some kind of event, whether I learn something there or not from the speakers or the people there, I always come back with renewed energy, with renewed excitement, with renewed ideas. Even if you just go on, I remember going on vacations, you know, you go on a vacation and you sit on the beach, and I hate the beach, you know, I hate sitting there on the beach. I'll go and, and sit on the beach for one day and then all of a sudden get bored of sitting on the beach. I want to do something. And so I'm, I'm then instantly pulling out my notebook and coming up with ideas or reading books and you come away refreshed, even though the goal wasn't necessarily business, but you get new ideas for your business. When you get out of your routine, your, your, uh, you know, the routine is great, but when you feel like you're stuck, then adding a little bit of variety to it can really help. This is the balance that we have to do as entrepreneurs. We love variety, we love new, we love, we love trying all sorts of new things, but if we don't stay consistent on something, we'll never accomplish our goals. But if all we do is do the same thing constantly and we stay consistent on doing the same thing, we end up getting bored and hating our business and now we just bought ourselves a job. So it's that constant balance where if you haven't had any variety for a while, you need to add more variety in. And if you haven't had consistency for a while, you need to add more consistency. This ebb and flow that's part of being an entrepreneur that um, I think you need to build in. So just scheduling in time. So you have your believe walks, at least I do, every, every morning to set me up for the day. And then scheduling time to be able to go off and uh, just, just not be at home. You know, whether it's a conference or an event, uh, a vacation, just something to refresh my mind. And then the third thing is just join a community. It was one of the biggest things that I missed was I had no community. I was doing it all by myself. And I'm, being introverted and being shy, I don't naturally seek out community, community and talking to people. It's not something that, that is normally in my mind. Um, and I'm nervous, you know, going up and talking to people. So it's harder for someone like me and maybe someone like you to join a community. But man, what a difference it makes. I think of Movement Makers, and this is really the program I wish I had when I was getting started. You know, Movement Makers is, yes, advice for me, and we meet every two weeks and talk about your, the movement you're trying to build and everything you're trying to create, but more than that is a connection and community to each other, that if you want to be a thought leader, you are not by yourself. Think about what you're trying to do. If you think about what I was trying to do, like I'm the only one who I know who's trying to do this. You know, who are your friends who are trying to make YouTube videos? Who else is walking through this mall making content? <laughs> right? Nobody. So who do you know who's doing what you want to do? Probably nobody. And who, who do you know who's doing what you want to do at a high level and who's ambitious and, and hungry? Probably nobody, right? Like you are probably the one who is the most kind, optimistic, ambitious person around you. And so when you start to get around other people who are like that as well, man, what a huge difference it makes. And so. You can look at Movement Makers if you want to be a thought leader, but just in general, find a community. Find a community of people who are doing the thing that you are trying to do, even if they haven't done it yet, but they're ambitious and they're hungry and they're trying to do it. It could change your life. Starting a business is really hard, and you know this. If you're watching this video, you made it this far, you know it, you know it's hard. The environment that you're around is only partially supporting you. And when you can shake it up, when you can get outside and go for walks, get some sun on your face, when you can get out of your home and go to events and just be around other people who are doing things, and when you can join a community of people who are trying to do something similar to what you're doing, it can make all the difference in the world. You've got a great idea. You're doing it for the right reason. You've got a noble cause. And if you feel like you have those energy dips where one day you're on top of the world and it's all exciting and then the next day you kind of wake up and you're, you're in a rut. If that rut continues on you know, for, for days or weeks, it's a sign not that you're on the, that this isn't right for you. It's just a sign that you need to add a little more variety and remind yourself of who you are. Focus on one idea and make it work. Focus on one business model, focus on one revenue stream, focus on one social media network, and make it work. So many times we're focused on too many things, we're distracted and our entrepreneur ADHD kicks in and as a result, nothing happens for all the people who are telling you to have 13 different passive income streams because if one goes away, you still have all these other 12. Most of the people who start up doing that make zero money from all of the passive income streams. You're making $10 a month, $4 a month, $7 a month, where instead if you could focus on one thing and maximize it, 
and make it amazing and put your energy into it, you will see exponential results. I look at social media as an example, and I just finished this training where we did the seven day build to serve challenge. It was amazing. Had so many awesome new thought leaders come into the program. People have got a big message, want to serve. And one of the questions I kept getting asking is, how do I be on every social media platform? How do I be everywhere? How do I get started and just blow up everywhere? And it's like, you don't, right? The answer is don't, don't, don't try to do that. If you are the person right now who is trying to be everywhere, look at your social media accounts. Chances are you're sucking everywhere. Chances are not, not you suck as a human, just the results aren't there. The effort's not there, the energy's not there because you're so forcing yourself to just get out there and create content and be on all the platforms that you also have a million other things that you have to do. And so as a result, you're, you're creating really mediocre content, content that people aren't interacting with. And if people don't like what you're putting out, it's not gonna lead to results for your business. And so much, 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 much better. It doesn't mean that you can't be there, you know? It doesn't mean that at some point you can't be there. That as you build your brand and you get bigger and you hire a team and you have more money that you can start to do this. But much better at the beginning is to figure out what is the one platform? What is the one revenue stream? What is the one business model? The one thing that if I focus on that thing, it's gonna lead to results so then I can scale. Entrepreneurs have a hard time with this because we want to do so many things. We have our ADD brain going on and we don't want to just do one thing. We also feel like it is limiting for what we want to do, right? If you have a big vision, a big mission, a giant goal for what you want to accomplish, doing just this one little piece of it feels too small. The way that I would structure it and think about it is this is just a sequence. You still get to do everything. You still get to do it all. You just have to go in order. You have to create a sequence that the thing that you need to focus on at the beginning of your business, whether it's your revenue stream, whether it's a social media success, whatever it is, what you have to figure out is how do I start to as soon as possible get a sustainable business for myself so that I can quit my job, if you have one, so that I can bring income in for myself and my family, so I can start to afford to hire a team, even if it's part-time or one person, so you can scale up your company, so that I can then go off and do all the other things. Because some of your ideas are, are amazing and huge and require more people and time and effort and energy, and some of the ideas can get started a lot faster. And so if you want to go and accomplish your big goal, your big dream, your big mission, then it's important to think about the sequence of things that instead of doing everything all at once, and as a result, all of the results being mediocre, focus on the one thing that if you push that lever, you really maximize that thing. You could start to make more money. You could start to have more impact. You can start to have more reach. You can start to see more success that then allows you to bring on more people to help you build and scale. For me, we've got 37 people on the team now, and I can do so much more, you know, because we got team than if it was just me by myself doing everything. And so in building my mission, I want to solve the world's biggest problem, right? People don't believe in themselves enough. And so in building that up, I need people, I need help, I need support, I need team, I need, I need a lot more than what I've got right now. But in be able to build a business that can bring in money, then I can afford the higher team that helps me accomplish a lot more things and take on a lot more projects. But if I was at the very beginning of what I was doing right now, I would not be doing most of the things that I'm doing right now. I'd still be accomplishing and going after the same mission, but I'd have to pick one thing to focus on. Pick the one thing at the beginning that I think I could make some money doing this so that I can live, I can, I can pay, you know, rent, mortgage. I can pay my internet bills. <laughs> I can pay for some food. Not, not living, you know, fancy life, but just being able to live and survive so I don't have to have a job. And then I would start thinking, okay, how do I then scale this one thing that I'm working on to build up to the point where I can remove myself or at least take some of the pieces off so that I can hire a team to help build and scale and grow. If I look back at my YouTube journey here, I did everything at the beginning. You know, I, I, uh, I filmed it, I researched it, I edited it, I did all of it. And it took a crazy amount of time and I made a lot of mistakes and I did a lot of stuff that I probably shouldn't have done. And 
just by focusing on that thing and making content and creating videos, it then allowed me to make a little bit of money that then I could hire my first part-time editor that then turned into a full-time editor that turned into a second editor and a research person that turned into someone helping me with the thumbnails and the graphics. And it, it continues to build up and scale, but everything I was doing myself in a mediocre way, but getting it done to then be able to scale out a team. And so most people are just stuck doing too many things. You're stuck, like look at what you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis. Look at your calendar. You have a limited amount of time, right? You have a limited amount of time. There's only so much you can do in, in a day, in a week. You have other responsibilities. Maybe you have a job, maybe you have uh, family, kids, uh, health um, that you have to look after. You know, th there's a certain amount of time that you have that you can dedicate to this thing. That time needs to go into the right efforts. And again, it's great to have that big mission and big goal and big dream. But if you have a limited amount of time every day or every week, and you are trying to create 13 passive income streams with that limited amount of time, no one of the streams ever gets enough energy, enough effort, enough of your mind space, enough of your creativity, enough of your love to ever become anything. And so you're diversifying way too quickly. You're diversifying way too soon. And apply that for anything that you're working on. Apply that to your, your business and the, and the opportunities that you're chasing, the partnerships that you're looking at, the things that you're saying yes to, the social media networks that you're trying to be on. Do yourself a favor. Don't try to be everywhere. Not yet, right? Just understand there's a sequence to things and you can make it so much easier for yourself to have more impact, to make more money, to have a bigger influence, to be more proud of yourself, to start getting more success and more results and more momentum. So much easier if you just sequence it out so that you don't have to do everything all at once. You don't have to feel the, the handcuffs and the restriction of saying, well, I, I don't wanna do this one thing for the rest of my life. This is where it gets, you know, entrepreneur ADE kicks in, right? And we don't wanna be locked in. I don't wanna do the same thing forever. Well, you don't, you won't do it forever. That's, that's not the point. The point is not to do this one thing forever. That if you took these 10 opportunities in front of you, you could do all 10. You could do all 10, just not all 10 at the same time. Because if you do all 10 at the same time, none, none of them are gonna work out. And often it's a small opportunity that can pay you more quickly that can start to build the momentum for you. So if you have your list of your 10 opportunities in front of you, 10 things that you could do, great. Look at what order should I go in so that I can start making money and start building momentum. One last quick example. I look at a lot of thought leaders, a lot of people who have a message, a lot of people who want to be speakers and authors and coaches and influencers, and they've got big goals and big ambitions for what they want to create. When I'm helping someone like that, usually the first option is coaching. The best thing to do at the beginning is coaching. So we're gonna dive into one specific business model, right? If you can look at, let's say, be a speaker, uh, getting brand deals as an influencer, writing a book, and coaching. If we had to, those are four opportunities in front of you, right? Let's say. So what did I say? Being a speaker, <laughs> getting paid to speak, getting paid to do brand deals, getting paid to be an author and selling books, um, even selling courses, your own materials and training and et cetera, and coaching. Those are, those are you know, four or five different business models that you can go through. Perfect. At the beginning, which one is the best? What should you focus on? It should be coaching. Why? People don't like the idea of coaching because you're trading your time for money, right? I, I don't wanna trade my time for money, okay? Well, what are you doing right now? You know, you're at a job because if you're at a job, you're trading your time for money. If you have unlimited time to figure stuff out and you have, you have a giant bank account, then you could do something different. But if you need to start to make money to build this thing up, then yes, you're trading your time for money, but it's a faster path to get you out of your job and into your business full time. Where everything else takes a lot more time. Speaking takes an incredible amount of time. If you want to, if you want to be a paid speaker, and and get paid enough that it's actually meaningful, it takes a lot of time for you to get good at the skill, 
as well as for you to build up momentum and a name in the industry. You have to do a lot of free speaking gigs before you ever get paid to do it. So if you have a horizon of years, awesome. But I'd rather you start get paid immediately while we work on the speaking career. You want to be an author and get paid to have a book? Cool. You can go and sell publish a book right now if you wanted to. You can get it out. You'll make, you know, you can sell it to your friends and family, your your audience. You'll make a, a few bucks, but it's not going to be anything meaningful. To get a paid deal or to have a, a significant, even if you're going self-publishing, to make a lot of money off your book, you have to have a big audience. To get the, the deal with uh, a publisher, they want you to have at least 100,000 followers. That's like your starting point to get in. So is that achievable? Of course. But now we're looking at years as a horizon as opposed to like this has to happen right away. So you're not getting paid right now off of your book. So if you're sitting there thinking, writing a book, creating a great manuscript, creating a great how-to guide, it's not going to be the thing that helps get you any kind of money anytime soon. And I want you to get paid because most people quit too soon on their ideas or they're trying to do a million different things at once, right? If you're trying to create a course, same thing, you have to build up enough momentum. You spend so much time making a course, creating the content, filming videos, or writing instruction manuals, or creating the PDFs, or whatever your course structure is. It takes so long to make the course, and then you have to go and market the course, and people don't know who you are yet. You don't have a brand yet. So could it work? Absolutely. Will it pay you more than coaching? Yes, absolutely, most likely. It's way more easy to leverage that than coaching. But again, the timeline is so long and most people quit too soon on it. Where if you are coaching, you can make, you can make money right away. If, as long as you have something that can actually help people, right? If you're good at what you do, you, you know how to solve somebody's problem, you can make money as a coach right away. And yes, you're trading your time for money, but it's better than having a job. And it also gets you closer to your customers. At the very beginning, I'm, much, I'm a much bigger fan of selling a service than a product because it gets you closer to your customers. You get to know their problems, you know their uh, issues, you know what exactly they're struggling with, and you can help them solve it, which allows you to create a better book, a better course, a better product, because you've worked with enough people through the problem. And so most entrepreneurs fall into the category, I wanna do all of it. Great, I wanna be a speaker, I wanna be an author, I wanna create my course, I wanna create my book, I wanna be a coach, I wanna do all of it. Awesome, you have a limited amount of time every week. To work on all five of those things at the same time means there's very little progress. How, if that's you and you've been writing your book, how long have you been writing your book for? You're like, wh when is it gonna come out? What year? How many speaking gigs have you done in the past three months? Right? How much time has gone into your course? It's like we start and stop and start and stop because we're tackling so many different things because you wanna do it all and you wanna have income streams coming in like crazy. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's amazing, but there's a sequence there's an order that if you can, as soon as possible, inside of your purpose, start to make money, start to build momentum, start to be able to bring on team to help you. It's so much easier. You can go so much further. You can go so much faster. You can <laughs> have so much less stress. You can have such a big impact that you just need to focus. You just need to focus. It's all possible. Your big dreams are possible. Go in order, figure out the sequence that will start to get you paid and focus. Because you made it this far in a video, I want to celebrate you. Most people start and don't finish. Most people never actually follow through. Most people say they want something, but they don't ever do the work to actually get it. But you are different. You are special. Believe Nation, you made it here all the way to the end and I love you. So it's a special celebration if you put a hashtag believe down in the comments below on this video, I will showcase you and celebrate you somewhere on the screen in a future video because you are awesome. If you want to watch another top 10 rules of Evan Carmichael, check out the video next to me. Continue to believe. I will see you there. Get clear on what you want. What do you want? Make it super clear. You can't just want a better life. What does that look like? Get super clear on what it is that you are going after.